Welcome to Softcore History. Hello and welcome back to Softcore History. My name is Jake Goldman. I'm here on a special Friday episode because we have a very special guest returning to the show. Well, it's I got going to- out Monday, but... Yeah, we're recording on Friday. Okay, well, I fucked it up already, huh? Yeah. This yeah. is what happens when you put me on and don't just replace me with Jack. Jack Mandeville is here. Hey, man. I'm going through a lot of anxiety right now. I've been drinking for five days straight right now, and and uh, I'm barely holding it together. Really? Tight. Yeah. What, what's up? Like, that's why, a lot of drinking, bro. Yeah, why are you drinking right now? Uh, b- about once a year. I, I do I, I do my little bender, my, yeah. my yearly bender, and I'm in the middle of it right now. Reverse cool. cleanse. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just, just basically drink body. until yeah, yeah, until I can't shit anymore, and then I uh, I reboot. That's that's interesting. So, anything spur that in particular, or you just kind of kick it off? It's just become tradition at this point. I think it was started by just generational depression. Oh, okay. Like, but is yeah. it like an August thing? Yeah, it's like, like oh, it's August twenty fourth, you know, late summer. It yeah, always okay. happens. Yeah. Okay. I usually spend uh, uh, part of the Drinking Bros uh, Network. Jared Taylor. I usually do a lot of it at his house, laying by the pool. Honestly, not a bad place to have a bender by a no, body of water. Not, not at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know what? Summertime sadness a little bit. You know, just right when the fall is just kind of creeping in, you can feel it, and you're yeah. losing it. There is a little bit of like uh, serotonin drop and unfortunately yeah. down here we don't get to even watch the leaves change or anything like that so you really don't but no man it's really good to actually meet you in person this time you were uh, on the show for the ancient civilizations uh or overrated civilizations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah overrated yeah, i got a lot of opinions about things um yeah one of them in particular dan sent me this last night um we got our first one star review our first one ever and i on that show on that show that particular that show. show yeah because I'm just going to read it to you. So, Well, let's read the comment first. I don't really care about getting a one-star review. I don't either. Because if someone's like, eh, this show sucks, I would be like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Good. Totally get that. It's good for it's good for people to think your show sucks. But also, this, is, this means, is a one-time thing for this one-star review. Don't yeah. leave one-star reviews in the for- moving forward think we're going to read it on the podcast. Yeah, we won't. We no, won't. Be- this was just funny because it was done in earnest. Mm-hmm. And I, Is earnest the right word? Yes, because I feel like this person that left this review... Genuinely sincere. ...had... No idea who we were before this. Well, they said they liked the podcast. Like they're up like, until I liked this it moment. up until this point. But if they had liked it up until that point, they would have heard many, many other jokes at the expense of your and our religions, ethnic <laughs> ethnicities, and religions, <laughs> yeah. and everything else. Yeah. So I don't know why. My my theory is that they were just a little heightened because of the events going on at the time. What were the events going on at the time? Pakistan. That was, no, the, no, that's the when all the side. yeah they were th- going back and forth with each oh, other. Oh, yeah, right, was, was right, 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 right. Okay, that makes a little more sense, I guess, contextually. Still, I'm yeah, gonna kind of weren't they weren't they weren't looking for that. I'm gonna read it real yeah. quick though. Um, so, so the I don't know the whole topic, but it says I wanted to like the show. I for the most part enjoyed the show until May 24th, 2021. There we go. <laughs> the, the most date. overrated civilizations episode. First, the start. Typo. First, they start the show off making borderline anti-Semitic comments about their one Jewish host. So I guess I'm not a host that's Jewish. I'm a Jewish host. You're yeah, the, that's not very woke identity. of them. Yeah, yeah, I am a Jew. Got it. Then they get into the part of the show where they talk about the Levant. I'm almost 100% Rob talked about it because I never mentioned the Levant and Dan doesn't either. We don't yeah. know where that is. Nope. Yeah. Not a chance. I yeah. Yeah, no 100% idea. chance yeah. I use the word Levant. It's, it's a thousand percent <laughs> chance. There's no question in my mind you were talking about it. Uh, they show their total ignorance regarding the region brush and minimize Jewish ties to the region and then finally suggest just give the region over to Jordan which is hilarious like, <laughs> I remember that yeah. well, I jokingly said Jordanians typically uh, they have a good history of understanding that region and uh, appeasing America as far as uh, how we operate in that region I just felt they're like the most politically stable pe- people around that area so just let them uh, relatively, that's what we relatively like uh like liberal for the region too. Yes, absolutely. Like, and listen, we're and I don't just mean, trying. I don't mean liberal like American Bryn liberal. Mar, yeah. yeah, I don't mean yeah. like Oberlin College. I just mean like they're like a like classically liberal. They're not society, stoning right? women as in opposed the to other. Yeah, yeah. 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 Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and exactly. we were just, just doing just it for the clout, yeah. Yeah. guys. We we're just doing it for the clout. We yelled at our Jewish friend because that was hip. It's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we, we had that, to. That's where those jokes came from. The, funny, was the the IDF, my IDF vacation at um, yeah, yeah. on Birthright. I I was laughing in the Did car. Did you do IDF? No, of course not. <laughs> okay. I haven't even done Birthright. Oh, okay. Do I look okay, man? Look at me. Do I look like an no, IDF you do, person? You do I don't assume anything about Jewish people or any people for that matter. That's very yes. brave of you. Yeah. No, what yeah. it is, is yeah, you, you don't look birthright. like Gal Gadot. 
<laughs> no. And you get an IDF ride along. <laughs> this is a four, like a four day IDF ride along. Yeah, and then if they would have listened to the next episode, I made tons of jokes about just busting strangers' windows in Palestine mm-hmm. and just like having fun beating people. Like clearly, we don't. I didn't do that. And also, well, they were. This clearly like that's a pro Israel person that was he, mad he, that we were right. That, that that's what it, with the whole Israeli uh, Palestine thing. You can't win because people get so impassioned by it. It's mm-hmm. like uh, the whole abortion thing. People get so impassioned by it that any joke, no matter how contextually sound, or even any, any anyone that take or understands the nuances of those situations, they immediately shut down because they are so just laser focused uh, with the way they see it. Yeah, one hundred. Well, and the, and it was going on at the time, so they were probably like. Oh, heightened and heightened. passioned and honestly we were probably in escape and then they heard us being just dumb yeah. like we mean always to our jewish mean, friend yeah. didn't we show didn't, up we didn't have reverence for something right but also imagine like, that i don't eat, i stand by our general stances in that episode which is like dude that the whole because our whole joke was like you own it you own it yeah it's who owns owned it? by everyone but you yeah it's You've been hot. conquered the entire history of it's, the world it's a real hot potato <laughs> everyone's like most, just kind of passing it around the most yeah. colonized part of earth yeah but uh <laughs> just for the rest of the, the comment for history podcasts you would think they would be better informed seems uh, like their no. research is just wikipedia mm-hmm. yes it's, that's in the description <laughs> that is yeah. the name of their fucking show <laughs> yeah. softcore it's like why aren't these guys scholars i don't get it but I will say as some, another show on the network that's called Iconoblast. Yeah. Uh, they, if you want a real deep dive with people that really, really, they really know their shit. parts on talk, fucking Caesar. Talk to Coop Cooperson and Joel. Yeah. Brenner. Like they are fantastic. We give you an hour, hour 30 of just nonsense. And Getting that this, pop history. This episode will be no different. Like yeah, we are, no. but I do want to say, um, as a person that has Jewish background, um, I don't know if this person was Jewish or they were offended. I think they were. I think they were definitely Jewish slash or pro Israel. By the way, yeah. it's funny because as soon as that episode went up, an Israeli uh, guy who likes the show DM me and was like, "Fuck, that was hilarious." Oh, he was like, "I'm pro Israel," but that was really funny what you said. We also have like, um, I'm not trying to like, we have we have gays, we have blacks. Like, I'm not trying to do that right now, but we have yeah, people you don't want to be yeah. But people, my do black reach, friend said it was chill. <laughs> yeah, no, but like we do have people that reach out and say that they enjoy the topics we cover because we shed light. Like for instance, Nellie Bly last week, a lot of people, there's a lot of mental health, good shed mm-hmm. light stuff on. I, I'm not using words, right? But I, don't be offended for me, please. No, I don't want you to be, and that's not your place to do it. Like fuck off. Yeah. That was yeah. funny that they were like, they, like no, they were, no, no, let's not run it back. The only reason we have a Jewish host is so we can make Jewish jokes. It's the same reason why of I've course. dated Asian women in the past, mm-hmm. Hispanic women in the past. Yeah, I That's honestly, why I'm converting to Islam, man. I really want to go ham on those jokes. Not yeah. ham, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is why Can't we have them that. on. Can't That's why that. you should get a... That's a professional right yeah. there, ladies uh, and gentlemen. It is. I am glad you're not dating an Asian woman anymore because, I mean, you were getting pretty, pretty bad with those jokes. It wasn't yeah. good. You just was, show up... You just show up to a happy hour with your eyes taped, and I was like, yeah, "You're taking is, a railroad cart everywhere. Yeah. Like it was bad." I was far. actually riding for the Haventa soccer team, the women te- women's team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah God. I, that one actually went over my head. You know what? Yeah. You know what the biggest problem I have with sleeping with Asian women is? I'm always horny like 15 minutes later. Yep. Hey, oh my god. <laughs> That's Never great. satisfied. Anyway, none of us are gonna be on Saturday Night Live now. No, you can't. Um, We're done. So today uh, we are talking about occultism and the Nazi Party. So solid transition. <laughs> yeah. I swear we're not anti-Semites. <laughs> now, how cool were the Nazis? Yeah, let's talk about yeah. some cool shit. The, the yeah, Nazis the good did. news is we're all white dudes in our 30s from the suburbs, so we've been probably hitting the Hitler docks pretty hard recently. I would imagine. I cannot tell you actually um, where I work. I won't say the name of it. We were doing a. It's not hard to find. Yeah, it's not hard to figure out where I work. But yeah. um, there's like a there was a request from the marketing team to like make paranormal like copy writing. And they like put it out to the team and they're like, hey, whoever does the best job gets like a prize, like yeah. a nice bottle of wine. I, I want it very easily. I've watched so much fucking conspiracy theory, yeah. occult, uh, esoteric bullshit yeah. in my last, I don't know, 10 years of my life that yeah. I, I, I could write it perfectly. Like, I'm just, it was, it I'm just great. I'm just going to say it. Uh, there's very few things I'll judge you on for race, but I will always pick a white man if I need to know about the Nazis. Yeah. Not yeah. because like white, even white, like, oh, white men are Nazis. It's because there's a good chance you grew up with your father tuned into the History Channel. Yeah. The 90s constantly. History Channel. The oh, 90s History Channel. Which was, no, yeah. I shouldn't even say a white, a white man. A white man 30 and up. Yeah. yeah. So, you. 
Yes. I'm going to you yes. if I need to know Look, about Nazis. Like I'm just honestly, saying, you, pick, yeah. you want to pick someone out of a lineup to tell you a little World War II history. Yeah. You're going to go with the it's white like guy. That guy's, that guy's going to know a lot. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of the things that you want to touch on too is that one, I want to say, I don't necessarily believe in any of this. Um, like there's, there's a lot of what, different. God? Yeah. We invented him. Yeah. Jews, you know, the whole monotheistic thing. But um, either way, no, I, there's a lot of like, Substanti- unsubstantiated stuff in the occult realm with Nazis yeah. that I'm not going to talk about. I don't think we need to talk about shit that probably didn't happen. Uh, you're not going to just like make this into the plot of Hellboy? No. Hellboy's not going to be fighting Rasputin or whatever on our podcast. But um, So we're not getting to the moon base? I mean, have you... Have you ever heard of Above Majestic? I have Jack? not. It is the best tinfoil hat shit you will ever watch on Amazon Prime. I made Dan watch it really fucked up at my house. Mm-hmm. It's about Nazi stuff? Space um, Nazis space and Draco Nazis, Reptilians. Yeah. Oh. I mean, are, are, do you know about the Draco Reptilians? I do not. We'll talk about it off here. Okay. It's, it's really interesting stuff. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's I, t- like I told him Denver to Airport turn it off within PCP. five minutes. Yeah. Uh, my wife saw me showing this to him and his girlfriend and like, at our house and she was like let's just take bars. him this insane person to the bar like i i, I take in all that like, shit oh no not, not this again, again. Yeah. goddamn nazi space base moon, moon hollow moon theory shit yeah no uh, but this is actually kind of interesting i think there's a lot of interesting stuff about how occultism did actually play into the development of not just the Nazi party, but actually the SS in particular. Yeah. Um, the there SS, was, for those who don't know, if you ever see a Nazi with a little skull. Himmler, Himmler was a freaking fantasy nerd. Oh, yeah. Growing up. We're yeah. going to actually start with a, a little bit of Blavatsky here. What skull? Red skull? No, no, not the not Captain America's nemesis. Okay. There's a, I think actually in, if you are really unfamiliar with World War II history, uh, in uh, Inglorious Bastards, Hans Landa. Uh, Christoph Waltz's character has the SS hat with the skull on it. Yeah. 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 And um, actually something really interesting that a lot of people don't know, and we'll touch on this as we go in, but like the SS logo is not two S's. Two lightning bolts. It's not two lightning bolts either. It's uh, two Sieg's. What's that? It's a a victory rune. Okay. It's two runes that are next to each other that symbolize victory in Nordic. Like it's Nordic saying. They they love their, they base their entire thing off of symbolism and ceremony and pomp. Well, the the circumstances, by the way. Side note the swastika is hilarious. And let me tell you why, (laughs) if you don't know. You might cover this a little bit. Listen, it's peace and love, brother. No, but that's the thing. It was a Hindu symbol. So the, and and prior to World War, the Nazis adopted it because it was popular in Bohemian Europe in the 20s and 30s. Absolutely. You can see it in a lot of places. Yeah. The, Which, if Hitler would have been a little bit of an artist, he could have fully enveloped himself in that Bohemian world. But yeah, he wasn't good at it. no one bought his art and the world right. changed forever. But imagine, and we got Israel out of it. Imagine we did. It and all it's circles all worth it. back, doesn't it? it, it all it's, it's full yeah. circle. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if World War II, if the Nazis had come to power in the 90s instead of the 30s, and there was just a yin-yang. On, on the, the red Nazi flag, flag yeah. it's a red flag with the yin yang in it. That's it. That's the exact same thing. The Buddhist thing. Ohm. It was just Western yeah. society being like, "Oh, yeah. it's so cool." And you got to cancel Mortal Kombat if that happens. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It was that's actually Western. really weird that there's a yin yang in the Mortal Kombat like whole universe or frame. Yeah, because yeah. it's only murder and murder. <laughs> it's not. There's <laughs> it's no not, balance. There's like no they're not yang. protecting yeah, the universe yin. by killing each other in blood yeah. sport. Like yeah. they just want to kill each other to win a tournament. But that's what the swastika is. It's just them taking an Eastern symbol. Well, turning it a little bit. Yes. And it looks angry. I mean, honestly, like, and Jack said it perfectly. It's like, they're excellent. They were excellent at PR. The Nazis yeah. might have been the best propaganda machine that's ever existed. And you can't fault the them The original for it. cultural appropriation. Making, they made everything look, uh, everything had to be ceremonial in some way. And you know what? I think, and that's why I want to talk about this topic in particular, because to understand why that happened that way, you need to understand part what's going on culturally in Europe in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, you have a huge resurgence of occult societies, esoteric societies. Um, different- I, I assume uh, the, all the discovery of uh, pyramids and pharaohs and stuff had to do with well, that. Egyptology, I, I yeah. see a big at, player look, into that. Look, I, think, I mean, look at how Europe came out of World War One. It was happening all across Europe. The reason why C.S. Lewis and uh, what was the uh, Lord Jared of the Rings? Tolkien. Yeah, the reason why those guys got a, a big influence of them covering the the kind of or, or writing the kind of material they did was their experiences in World War One. It affected the entire continent. I mean, yeah, people really don't understand like the long term lasting effects of a world war right on different societies yeah like, listen it, all i know about world war one is that 
on Christmas Day, they got out of their That's trenches. That's not true. And they played soccer. That's not true. That's what I was, it's I been was taught that. Okay. So uh, a couple different things were happening. Like, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Like paranormal occult stuff was so popular. Like seances were happening in normal family yeah. living rooms. Like yeah. people were really into it. You also have, setting the stage here, Germany coming out of World War One is financially in shambles. Yeah. And not a healthy society. No, absolutely not. And it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's worth noting, by the way, not only not a healthy society, but prior to World War One, they were like the it country. Yeah. Artistically. Yeah. Um, actually, even a little bit after World War One, German filmmakers in the 20s were like the best filmmakers in the world. But like our, up to up until World War One, a lot Germany, of competition in the 20s. Ger- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Germany was like it, the it country. They were the hot country. Like they had all the art. They had uh, the best thinkers. They, they didn't they, have to steal it at that time. Either. No, they didn't. No, it was, they it was were, coming out of there. Yeah. They, yeah. Were, uh, they were making shit happen. Yeah, dude. It's they, crazy. They were industrially really great, and they were a relatively new country, too, because they only got unified in the 1870s. And it, it's, it's it's almost like America on steroids in a lot of ways. In a very fast timeline, yeah, 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 too. Yeah. Um, I think so. there is a lot to unpack in this topic that I'm going to try and do efficiently for this podcast, but I do want to say I'm going to start with... Uh, Madame Helena Bl- uh, Blavatsky. She was a well-known occultist in the late 1800s. Okay. Um, she had a mindset known as theosophy. So she was doing just a lot of different esoteric teachings. Uh, one of the main things, though, she thought that this book was true. It's called Vril, The Coming of the New Race, is this book that she read. And she's like, I think that's true. It's about a subterranean group of people. Okay, mole and, people. And mole people, essentially, right. but like perfect people. Um, oh, perfect mole people. Like ancient Aryans basically. Okay. And she started to blend a little bit of her <laughs> theology into sure. uh, this is stuff. I don't by fucking way, believe. Jack, where, yeah. where do Aryan Aryans aren't even, by the way, European ancient right? Aryans. Like they're, aren't they like, they're like nothing guys from the Asian steppe or something like I, that. I'm not actually Aryans yeah. or Indian or something. Right. Uh, there's a lot. Can we make there's that parody l- show? Ancient what? Aryans. <laughs> ancient Aryans. It's just white guys. Yeah, like just a bunch of blonde f- guys. fumbling with tools. Of, like, I don't hot, know. Like, hot blonde cavemen. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to chisel this rock. Yeah. But, um, actually your girlfriend's Swedish, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting stuff's going to come out with like Nordic shit too here. So there's a lot of weird like ties to Nazism oh, and Nordic like the, rune. Nord, Nord, actual Nordic people, not the, not American Scandinavians, but yeah. actual Scandinavian people are fully aware at this point how the fetishes, the, how we fetishized, you know, Viking culture yeah. has taken on at times a weird white supremacy yeah. undertone. Yeah. And he's, so Nords who rightfully have the right to, you know, have, you know, be proud of who they are now because they're seeing it get appropriated by this white supremacy culture. They're now they're, they're taking a step back being like, Oh, I don't want to be associated with that. So yeah. how long before you stop rooting for the Vikings? Uh, the football team. Yeah. I'll always root for that team. That's never going to win. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. You're from Minnesota yeah, I'm too. From, yeah, I'm Fucking from Nordic American land. You yeah. are. You are. Yeah. Man. I grew up with a lot of Olsons and yeah. Yeah. Ericsons. A lot of Lund sins. Guards. Yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. sins. Um, yeah. No, but like, so this, she started believing like her philosophy towards like the end of what she's preaching starts taking a turn about racial purity and this kind of discussion. Racial Science was really hot back then. Too. It was extremely oh, hot. Eugenics was happening here in America. Oh, yeah. for yeah. sure. People were like, oh, actually, fuck. We talked about it in the 1904 Olympics episode. This is the we same did. time frame where they had uh, St. Louis Olympics, first Olympics in America. They had a special like sav- game for sa- games for savages, the savage games. And they had like, oh, dude, that's right. I forgot they had, about like, that shit. Indians, uh, like Native Americans and uh, like India Indians and African tribesmen and all these other people compete against white people. Oh my God! But Jim Thorpe was doing the the regular Olympics. Uh, I don't know that he was in 1904. No, no, I don't think he was in that one. Okay. Okay. Well, they even screwed him over, right? I love Jim Thorpe. I had to read the same fucking like seven paragraph story for SAT prep probably six hundred times about Jim Thorpe, and I love the guy now. He's made Carlisle Indians, man. He, uh, him, and Bo Jackson uh, are uh, in uh, the greatest uh, ath- American athletes, athletes ever. Yeah, yeah. in no, American I mean, history for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I would definitely put Jim Thorpe at the top. Yeah, of that he's he's so few people actually know what he accomplished in his life and it's everything, every, every, everything, and literally he everything he touched. Uh, he was uh, he was just the, a he, success. He played without like he played without a shoe one time and still ran people yeah. over. Like it's insane. Mm. 
He's not doing that now. Jim Thorpe is dead? Right. But I'm, I'm saying you put Jim Thorpe into modern sports. Why would you? Okay. It ain't happening. I agree with Dan's take that th- that Jim Thorpe is probably a mediocre athlete compared to like the NBA just in general now Sure, but you can't judge people through the lens of modern entity. Or in play yeah, yeah. Any, any 12-year-old Dominican is a better ball player than Babe Ruth so right actually, now. Actually, I was about to say this. I actually yes. don't agree with that. And I, I do. actually so I fully totally do. I fully don't agree with your... All right, first off, you of all people should not agree with that because if if John Cruck was able to be an all-star in God the 90s... Damn it. We got baseball on court. If John Cruck's fuck. fat ass was able to be on an all-star team in the 90s... Better I'm, athlete than Babe Ruth. I'm fairly certain Babe Ruth could have held his own. Nope. And that's not to say that... What do you think the pitch speed was when Babe, Babe Ruth, Ruth was swinging a bat? off milkmen. Uh, roughly the same. <laughs> really? It was, I mean, it was... Just, they were throwing 98s down the fucking pipe, no, dude? No, They're Absolutely 70 not. 70 at best. No, they yeah, were, they were in the bullshit. 90s. They're they were getting in the 90s. off their shift at the mill. They Rob, in the your 90s. favorite sport is a fucking museum masquerading as a physical activity. Yep. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Babe There's Ruth. no way Babe Ruth would succeed in... I, I'm not talking about baseball. We are talking about Nazis. I don't have time to murder you in this debate, but I will murder you in this debate at another point. These guys are going back to the docks. Topic. I think Rob, I just found my next fucking Rob, topic. Great. Rob. Now we got to talk about baseball for a fucking hour with this. Yeah, guy. we're not doing that. Babe Ruth is going back. Any, you don't have any choice in the matter. Babe Ruth <laughs> really is going don't. home. That's the most unfortunate he, point. He was probably the only guy who didn't have to have a second job. The other guys are going back to the I'm, docks I'm, talking about how Babe Ruth took him like 500 feet. Yeah, no, Babe Ruth. Okay, I don't care. So I'm gonna, let's I'm get gonna, back into Nazis. I'm going to put a pin in this. Yeah, let's I get back into Nazis. I do not care what Babe Ruth did or didn't do. So all this theosophy stuff is going on, but in Germany, there was a movement called Ariosophy, which uh, along with what was called like Volkish movement, the Volkish movement, it appeared during like that early 1900s, right after World War I. uh, And it redefines the idea, Volkish beliefs, like redefine the idea of what it means to be German. And this is kind of... What is the etymology of Volk? You don't want me to uncork that. I, I would imagine psychologically because uh, of everything that everyone went through in World War One, but Germans obviously coming out on the losing end, they were... There's an identity crisis. Hard, yes. Yeah, there's yeah, an identity exactly. crisis. Yeah, and so uh, Volkisch is probably has to do with work because it's kind of like the foundational... They're, I'm asking for Volkswagen. Oh, Volk. It's work, dude, isn't it? Or people? Oh, it just means people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Volkish beliefs included the idea of a national rebirth of ancient Germany, which included Germanic paganism, racialism, romantic na- and like a really romantic sense of nationalism. Yeah. And this kind of stuff bubbling up after World War One really kind of sets the ground for where the SS and the, the racial purity structure for the Nazis right. came from. And I... That's why I think this is a fascinating topic because it's not just like Hitler being like, oh, I hate Jews. This it, fuck them. It, well, there's a lot. Well, that and, us. and his mentor, uh, and I forget Dietrich. The, yes. Dietrich, um, he, he was into that occult shit. And people are going to talk about that too. He started the Nazi ideology. Like mm-hmm. it was not Hitler. Hitler came from that guy. That guy. And then Heinrich Himmler himself is completely off shot from that. Like he's not even. And, he, and he's one of those weirdos that um, you see, it's like the guys who regret that they didn't serve. And he was one of those guys that missed out on World War One. Yeah. So he had this weird inferiority complex where he had to like prove himself. He was obsessed with looking like a soldier yeah. because he never actually did it. Where the average German, when they were done with World War One, they're like, I'm never fucking yeah. getting into a fight again. They were over it. Yeah, they were, were like, over fuck it. this yeah. trench warfare bullshit. Yeah. Like, I'm done fighting. So um, so combining all of this stuff with the great age of spiritualism that all of Europe is going through uh, gave a different spin on Germanic esoteric circles in particular. And amongst the most popular was a society called the Thule Society. And That doesn't sound creepy. It, do, it sounds like Zool. Yeah, it sounds like Zool. Ghostbusters yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this society is kind of where it all starts like this, the, this by the way is like the first time in history where people have way too much time on their hands oh so much leisure time that's because so, they didn't have jobs losers <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when people are unemployed you yeah. get fascism yeah real quick say, yeah it, a lot of it, the problem is the industrial revolution like people just have more free time yeah you know what i mean like this is like the first like well, okay think about this too uh, as a side note you don't really see like clinical depression until people have free time you don't have time to be sad when you're busting your ass to live another day. Yeah, like, I know. I'm, I'm yeah. an entertainer who's making a livable wage. That's why I'm depressed all the time. Dude, we have we fiddle around with bullshit half yeah. the time. Like, mo- honestly, a lot of work is kind of busy work anyway. And it, it, 
there's not like a tangible thing you hold when you're done with Just it. Just get back so. to the assembly line. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, dude, we need I to. Know, I need to go back to the oil field. Fuck this shit. Right. So essentially, it's like when pigs go insane in a zoo. Because they're really smart, so they just keep walking the same path over and over again just to have something to do. Yeah, like the it's the people in uh, what was that? Not Midnight Run. Um, oh, Billy, what's that movie? Uh, the Turkish prison one. Oh, uh, Midnight airplane. Express. Midnight Express. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not airplane, but yeah, yeah. They walk in a circle because yeah. they're going insane in the Turkish prison. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Pigs do sure. the same thing. Yeah. So this society was actually the first society that sponsored the German Workers Party. They were big advocates of the German Workers Party, and they had a lot of pure Aryan beliefs. This is why I don't trust factory workers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the German Workers Party or the DAP was later organized, reorganized by Adolf Hitler into the Nazi Party. According to a Hitler biographer, uh, Ian Kershaw, the organization's membership list reads like a who's who of early Nazi sympathizers and like the people that kind of got the movement started. You mean outside of Germany? No, a fool. It's in Germany. Oh, it's okay. kind of the star, like the, about, uh, the inception of how the inner workings of the Nazi party, not like, because I, I think people really need to understand too, the Nazi party as a whole versus the SS are very different. Like the, the people you think of like Christoph Waltz, for instance, those are SS. Yeah. Like they are not everyone was, it was a one party nation everyone was a nazi right at a certain point so you can't just be like oh like that's why the whole nazi argument kind of is infuriating to me too it's like well there were probably fine people that were nazis like it's the people that were orchestrating yeah, well, genocide oh man that's gonna be the the, the clip, clip right clip. there no context. Oh, no, yeah. where people cancel the fuck out of this show oh yeah no <laughs> i want them to come at me as a jewish person just be like you nazis right. like, no i fucking find everything about it to atrocious fair, but don't don't come at me with dresden was a war crime if you're gonna get mad about that comment i mean oh i've been uh, dresden was a war crime dresden was <laughs> Absolutely, work yeah. Right. yeah. They bombed the that's shit out of that place. That's not me sympathizing with Nazis. That's me just that. They're yeah. innocent people that got yeah. murdered. Some, the they incinerated that city. Sometimes yeah. you got to just do total war. Um, Some, so, sometimes it happens. So, you don't want to do it, but sometimes it happens. I mean, uh, or whatever the Canadian guy that was committing war crimes out of the car. Leo Major. <laughs> that was a war crime. Yeah, that was a did war you, crime. Did you hear about this no. one? Leo Major. So we did a, an yeah. episode about Leo Major, who was a Canadian who took over an entire Nazi city by himself because he uh, went in and just like stole a uh, kind of armored vehicle, had Nazis at gunpoint drive with a white with white flags out of the car and then just started lighting up all the other yeah, just take pop shots like driving around yeah. me like hey we got to surrender guys and the nazis would come out and he would just light them up yeah oh i mean that's the definition fuck. of a war crime like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also at the point where the nazis pretty much knew it was over and yeah. they just kind of gave up you so know, he captured a bunch of them up. that's some of that famous up. canadian ingenuity right there yeah. it's like why fight when we can just make them come out of their hole um, so a primary focus of the Fool Society was a claim concerning the origins of the Aryan race. In 1917, people who wanted to join the Germanic order of the Fool Society, out of which the Fool Society developed in 1918, had to sign a special blood de declaration of faith concerning their lineage. This is what the faith declaration Wait, was. Wait, so this is like some skull and bone shit? Very much so. Tight. Yeah. Uh, the signer hereby swears to the best of his knowledge and belief that no Jewish or colored blood flows in either his or his wife's veins, that among their ancestors are no members of the colored races. So one of the things that's not super substantiated that I do find interesting is that like part of the underlying beliefs of like Aryan purism is that Aryans are descendants of Venusians people from venus like nordic aliens ah yes of course yeah right uh but they believe that like pe interbreeding races it was basically their scientology yeah it, it <laughs> exactly it's it was scientology a, that became a, a, it, a national political party and you know what if uh your girlfriend's nordic heritage wouldn't have messed around with all those mud people she'd be telepathic <laughs> jack don't you know that <laughs> oh man yeah. i will say this and this is people i've uh, you gotta say it carefully because everyone's so it's like the whole israel thing or whatever talk, where people get so heated and so you can't say this to people without people freaking out but i did watch uh, from what in my short observation was and and again i'm saying this knowing it doesn't work here it can't work here on this entire hemisphere but over there, for numerous reasons, I saw a socialist society that was a well-functioning society. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, there's no way you can look at Sweden and be like, they're fucking up. No, no yeah, yeah they, they have everything's right. in tune there. Yeah. But the reason why my girlfriend became an American citizen, the reason why she prefers, she loves Sweden, she goes back every year, but the reason why she prefers to be in America is 
in that socialist society, there's only so far you can climb. Yep. You'll have a nice life. You're going to have the car, the TV, and the house. Right. You'll have a nice, comfortable life. But in America, uh, if you roll the dice here, you can have uh, a fucking a life that's not even necessary. It's so good. Yeah, no, know? I mean, we have a very uh, all or nothing mentality yes. in America. And that's, that's what happens a, when you travel across an ocean on a piece of wood. Yeah, no. And we've talked about this on the podcast, too. The serotonin and dopamine levels of or not serotonin, but just the dopamine levels of people that have migrated to this country, like ancestrally we're a different stock it's way higher yeah. because it's people we're different that from those chose people. to move here across, yeah. and for the not, most part not be for the most part they chose well yeah you're right <laughs> it's people that survived that trip yes. though and it's there is in mass migration events when you do that dopamine levels spike yeah. when you're going through that and then that carries into your dna and goes down the line and so higher dopamine leads to higher aggression yeah more all or nothing kind of mentalities very like do or die and so that's why our society is the way it is mm -hmm. i mean and you know for better or worse it, that's it what takes we, balls to to leave what you know especially a hundred years ago when yeah. you, you knew you were never going to see your family again no that's done there's yeah. no there's no fucking internet there's no writing paper like writing letters across you, the you're Atlantic. on your own for, yeah. you're you're you literally buy. starting from you're, scratch you're dead yeah, yeah. yeah. See you, yeah, you see, might as well see, not see have never. ever known me see basically. never yeah so no it's I, I think it's very interesting that you bring that up as well because it is we are an all-or-nothing society, for better or worse. It's, and it, 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 we're structured that way, like you said. It's in yeah. our DNA. Yeah, that's why, like socialism in this entire hemisphere, I, this entire hemisphere generally has that attitude. Yeah, for sure. And that's why socialism will never truly work here the way it's supposed to, in theory. Because people never will be okay with comfortable. Exactly. Yeah, they everybody want, wants. They to want the most. Get rich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And it's well, I mean, the, that's a national the ethos. Is the roof, it. guys. So what? What is Michael that? Jordan said that. Oh, yeah. Another great athlete. Okay, so after, uh, so Hitler at a certain point, we're going to jump ahead here past the Thule Society, um, getting to around 1933. So this stuff's all going on. Thule Society is the first people to endorse the uh, DAP, or the Workers' Party. Someone comes out and says, like, there is no Nazism without Thule. We were the the start of it. And Hitler's like, mm, I don't need people like knowing origin shit. So they right. start dis distancing themselves from anything esoteric they're trying to make it like palatable they want basically. to be right. legitimate yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly they don't need they didn't come to power because of the beer hall which they came to power they were because they were elected into power yeah they were they were given it like yeah, yeah. i mean but anyway so uh hitler had the german workers party with any support the society eventually dwindled and died out in i guess like 1925 because hitler was like no we're gonna pull back on this workers party like uh esoteric link there was an attempted resurgence of the Thule Society in 1933 that failed, but in fact, many esoteric organizations would be closed down in 1935 as part of the anti-Masonic legislation. Basically, any group that was an esoteric in nature uh, that could threaten the new Nazi party was looped into this category. So Thule Society, there's a couple, the Volk Society, Vril Society, there's a bunch of them. You can read about all of them. I do not have enough time to talk about all the weird esoteric. So they were hunting the Illuminati? Basically, they were just like, we can't have this tied to it because it's going to lead to distrust in our party and movement. Right. It didn't. The belief st structure did not go anywhere, yeah. though. So, ironically, as all this shit's dying, Heinrich Himmler, who uh, was the I guess Reich Reichsführer or whatever you want to call it of the SS, he took yeah, a lot. He was the guy. He was the and guy. He really, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it all falls on Hitler, but. Himmler was, he created the SS in his vision. Yeah, he was the gasoline on that fire. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like Hitler was, uh, God, really going to have some great sound bites out of this episode. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Tell no, us, here we go. Hitler, tell us how much you like Hitler. Hitler was more the mouthpiece than the architect of a lot of the genocidal stuff. He was the propagandist. He was the public speaker. He was the person that wowed the crowds. From, uh, again, as a white male in his uh, 30s, you know, I've been watching a lot of uh, World War II doc, not specifically Nazi, but World War II documentaries lately. But that's one point they do make is when it comes to the final solution, it never directly came out of the mouth of Hitler. Hitler to do that, it was always heavily implied yeah. to do that. Yeah. And Himmler was more than happy Himmler to do that. Himmler was like, that. fucking, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's yeah. kill some because, fucking Jews. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and, you know, an actual uh, historian may, uh, you know, tell me I'm dead wrong on this, but Himmler may have had more of a desire to execute that than Hitler did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would 100% agree with you. We're, yeah, you've watched your shit. How much of this have you been really diving in lately? 
I feel like this is straight up just watching a uh, documentary. <laughs> like, That's it. As of late, it seems yeah, like very no, like, top of I mind. I swear I got two things happened when I got into my thirties. I fell back in love with baseball and I started watching a lot of world war two documentaries. This is the baseball side of the table. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. I yeah. mean, <coughs> I like some baseball. We man. just turned 30, so we'll yeah, just wait we're for just, that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Wait yeah. For switch. We'll right. get really into like stick and hoop and whatever old yeah. stuff you guys are into. Stick and soon. hoop is fun. <laughs> about a stick and hoop for my child. Stick and hoop, kick yeah. the can, jacks. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> all those wholesome games we played in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. back before smut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. rap. God, hip hop ruined America. Yep. Just kidding. Um, anyway. Uh, Wish hit- Hitler dealt with that. <laughs> Shut the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get us another one-star review yeah, from the same person. <laughs> yeah. Like he made a re- he said a serious thing. So Jack actually uh, talked about this, but Himmler took a fuck ton of mysticism and esoteric knowledge and incorporated it into the way he, he was a things. real fantasy. Nerd. He was a big nerd. Yeah. But it's funny. They shut down all the stool society shit. And he basically just took all of that and was like, I'm going to make uh, this the foundation for the. I cannot pronounce this, and I'm so sorry, but I think it's. You don't speak on, German. On Nenerbe? On Let me see this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's this one. Yeah, you're yeah. from St. Louis. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to get into the on here. here. Uh, on means ancestral heritage. So and that's, they're just back to like, yay, we're white basically so it's yeah and there is that fine line between being like i'm proud of where my ancestors came from and uh i'm greater than you because of my ancestors so they didn't even know about this as it was happening like people didn't learn about this offshoot of the ss until way after world war ii like most of the documents about like the internal documents of the organization were destroyed but people know enough about it to realize what was going on at this point uh, it means in Hestral heritage, it was an appendage of the SS, and basically it was like a think tank for people from the field of archaeology, anthropology, ethology, I guess, uh, a lot of folklorists, runologists. Runologists, cla- yeah, yeah, great. That's 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 as cool as a numerologist. But, that, but, you know Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, that just sounds like a girl who collects crystals. But that, that let me tell you something what I observed about, the, again, sure. not Germany, but in Scandinavia. We as Americans have this such romantic notion of what rune stones, what they entail, what went into these rune stones. So I personally walked within walking distance of my my girlfriend's childhood home. I walked to ten rune stones while I was in Sweden, and they have all the uh, they have all the translations on there. And rune stones, all they really were was like signs. They were signs or monuments to the dead. It was always like yeah. Thor killed his father, died, and he built this bridge in honor of his father father it was just being like hey i miss my dad uh or i miss yeah. my son and uh, i i built this thing here for him and that's it there's yes. no there was no romantic They're not charging shit with blood. Shit. Yeah. yeah there was no because like really? warrior shit about it it was just like normal trying to keep my my it's my like, dead it, husband's memory right, right. Alive. it's like when you're at a golf course and you see charlie wilson had a hole in one in 1992 here like, yeah or like yeah. this is steve's Slow bench plaque. also room, yeah. Yeah. room just means writing yeah. And it's writing yeah. on a stone. There's no real cool Is shit about it. Yeah. yeah. They were the same assholes a thousand years ago as we are now. We're just, we use obituaries now. Right. By the way, it's worth noting that all this like heritage stuff that they're all into and everything, I, it is especially made up because A, Germany became like Germany became a country in the 1870s. And B, what did they ever really do before the world wars? Like Prussia helped beat napoleon but that was really wellington like they were barbarians when the romans were around like they did they helped destroy well, rome and i mean if you count austria into the equation 19th century they were pumping out great musicians and artists and that's whatnot f- that's fair for austria but i mean and i guess germany, germany like too Beethoven yeah and stuff like that i don't know it just doesn't feel like it's that spectacular like it's fine <laughs> it doesn't feel that impressive to me that they're like Yes, we've done so much. Well, yeah. And so like the basis of a lot of thought was like, if it wasn't for Aryans, nothing would be here. There would be no architecture or agriculture. Feels inaccurate. Are yeah. The, the French aren't it Aryan. takes a real uh, non-understanding of history to think that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the of French course, aren't Aryan, the Greek aren't Aryan, the Italians aren't Aryan. The, the, the like, Germans what, what? wouldn't even been the Germans if it wasn't for the Romans. Right, right. Exactly. So it's interesting that like... Everyone's like, no, the research that's coming from these people is bullshit. But they're like, 
no, we made a think tank. We've confirmed that we are the purest race. Isn't that crazy yeah. how we confirmed we that? We all hopped in a tank <laughs> and thought the same thing. And, you know, we look for evidence or made up evidence that supports this. So, of course, in, and this is the danger of a one-party system. You can make a committee for anything to validate your beliefs or actions. We do it in this country with two parties. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. We yeah. Do that. Yeah. But, um, we. So uh, the Nazi government used this group's research to justify many of their policies. For instance, the think tanks claim that archaeological evidence indicated that ancient Aryans lived across Eastern Europe was cited as justification of German military expansion into the, that region. By the way, this is what North Korea does all the now. time. They said they found a unicorn in a cave not that long ago. Yeah. And, and, and to be fair, uh, as Americans, we have... Uh, we even today, fuck you, Paul Bunyan's real. Infuse a certain amount of mysticism in our, into our not not just justifications of doing things, but like we we there's at, there's a difference between loving your country and there are people who worship the flag as a fucking religious symbol. Oh sure, right? no, it's I mean, really unhealthy. Okay, think think about it. What what do we call the expansion of the West? Manifest destiny. Yeah. That's that's not a loaded term. Like yeah. that's pretty loaded. Like mystically, at least you're saying there's divine right. Yeah. To conquer because That's, we're here, right? The, the whole point is whenever you start when you, whenever you start dealing in that, it it can start getting extremely it dangerous. Gets bad. Yeah. It normally leads to genocide. Yeah. It turns out. Pretty scary. It's, um, it's mostly just funny to me how shaky the ground always is when they justify it too. Like they really it's it's like uh fuck. I mean, it'd be like the equivalent of like um I don't know, Ole Miss somehow claiming they're the greatest college football team of all time. Yeah. Like, and, and just really, really stretching with what they've done and everything. Like, like it's never, I, I don't know who would be even like in the running for like, you know, we really are like, we really have done some incredible things, but like, it's almost never that. It's, no, it's almost, it's almost always like a <sighs> That's very medium accomplished people that are too into things like, I, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with it with sports. It's sports, but everything else, well, like, unless you're like an Alabama fan, literally murdering they, someone, they'll yeah. cry, six. they'll cry. Grown men will cry because of a loss. And that's when you're like, Come that's a problem. On, buddy. Yeah. I mean, they're not, you know, there is the point though, where it's like, okay, that, uh, Bama guy poisoned the tumors trees yeah. and, yeah. and they'll you know, commit assault and Harvey yes. uptake. No, yeah. I mean, there was after the kick six, there were like two murders. Yeah. R.I.P. Harvey Updike. Is he dead? Yeah, he's he dead. died. Yeah, uh, he's dead. Yeah. Anyway, but like it's that kind of like dedication to a team is what you see kind of permeate into politics or yeah. or religion or it's it's all at the end of the day, it's team sports and it's self-validation. It's, it's tribal. Like, I'm, I'm included. Yeah. I'm in group. You are out group. That's yeah. a lot of where our problems come from is in group out group yeah. and the way our society has grown. We're not, we are like, people are like, oh, we weren't ready for the internet. I don't think we were ready for civilization the size of this yet. Like, honestly, at this level, yeah, we our very, species we, has never been ready for sh anything. Yeah, no, I mean, like, we we're we ready for steam engines. No, I mean, yeah, you ever read like the first accounts of a, a train travel no. on, at like 15 miles an hour? And they're like, no. people are not ready for these kind of breakneck speeds. That's, yeah, it it's, sounds about right. Yeah, there's just like, this is unholy. There's, like, a, there's a great quote in Ken Burns' Civil War uh, in like the first, second episode where someone was like, I mean, good Lord, if these are the weapons we're using right now, like in 1860, what are they going to fight with in 100 years? Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, buddy, you're going to find out. Yeah. Right. Well, not you, but someone. Yeah. <laughs> someone unlucky. Yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you? Oh, God, I don't want to sidetrack. The last Civil War veteran died, uh, I think it was in the 19, like 53, 55, something yeah. like that. Can you imagine having lived through the Civil War? Uh, all the way to World War II, watching the advancement of weaponry yeah. in that time. Fucking planes. Yeah. Planes. Yeah. Just planes. You could go, you went from flight being literal science fiction to, you want to fly to Europe? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get you there in a couple <laughs> hours. You ever look yeah. at like old retro futurism, like paintings and books and stuff like that of their like what they're predicting for air travel? Mm -hmm. Like I've what? watched the Jetsons, yes. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm talking about, but okay. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of crazy how And then we got rid of the friggin' Concorde. It crashes one time. We set ourselves back. Yeah. We were on a good space. We were on a good track there. Yeah. I now think we, it's back actually. Now we gotta yeah, they are bringing it back. We gotta rely on Bezos now. It's annoying, his penis rocket. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bummer. I wish we sticked with blimps. 
Honestly, though the Germans didn't didn't really turn out too well with the Hindenburg, did it? Oh, that was well, in Jersey, okay. It blows up one time <laughs> yeah, and you get rid of it. It's like the Germans the just get rid of their entire blimp force. Yeah, I know. I I really do wish there was like a classy blimp travel experience you could have. Yeah, like the, way, the Archer one. The also, Hinden, yeah, the Hindenburg you just go with was helium. this close to being named after Hitler. You're kidding? No, I'm not. Well, there was a giant American Nazi party. Yeah. Oh no, sure. it was a German blimp. It was from Germany. It wasn't like an American blimp. But I'm saying that they would have played here. Yeah, would have yeah. been great. Okay, so ultimately the goal of this group was to make the new Germany as Aryan as possible. And the way they did it was by making Nordic connections too. They were like, oh, Nordic people are of the of, are super pure, purely tied back to Aryans. And Aryans are an ancient society, of course. You know, that's ancient people. So they start making all these like made up, it's like, oh, look, we found this in uh, fucking yeah, Austria. Found, uh, North Koreans found a, like yeah, I said, exactly. found a fucking unicorn so, in a cave in North Korea. Or, you know, Joseph Smith saying, look into this hat. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only I can read out of this hat. Right, exactly. And so that's where, and you see some of it across like the symbolism that you see. Obviously, like the, the swastika is a good example of just other things that are being reappropriated. But like there's a lot of runeology. There's the SS is two runes. Yeah. And Himmler put all this like mysticism and like, that there's talk of Himmler looking for um, a lot of like, for instance, his uh, medical experiments, like live vivisection and stuff like that was trying to induce like states of consciousness too. So is that like, French movie Martyr? What? Have you ever seen the movie Martyr? No. Have you ever seen it? Nay. No. That's uh, Swedish for no. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's uh, this whole, it's a fuck up. Don't watch it. It's I know Swedish because I'm a fucking racist. Yes, yes. Jack actually was uh, carving runes into his body yeah. before the. That's the, really cool, man. The podcast started. <laughs> I, I learned Swedish for pussy. That's why I learned. Uh, no, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, whatever, dude. Yeah. People do a lot of stuff for that. <laughs> but the whole yeah. point, the whole plot of Martyr is these fucking sick French people. Of course, they're French. Are will like torture girls in particular because they're the best like Catholic martyrs or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I just to yeah, try. like Joan of Arc. Yeah, exactly, man. And so, like, they would just torture them because that you can, there's like a moment right before uh, they I die. Know, I know what where you're they fucking talking Heaven. Yeah, I've seen this movie. It's yeah. god off. Oh, it's, shit, dude. Yeah. That's a lot like Kingsman Golden Circle. No. Where, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's well, a, it's, that's it's like, um, it's also cut. like, uh, what is it? Sleepers? What is it? The. What was that? Oh, movie? sleep the Brad Pitt movie. No, the, the one uh, with uh, where they Kiefer keep, Sutherland where they kill themselves. Yeah, they, and they remade it with uh, but yeah, it's, it's dog shit. I don't it's not the, name the, of it. the original was not good. Neither the neither of them were was good. even worse. Yeah, um, but some other fun things too. I mean, so basically, like this is all to explain how the occultism really did fundamentally change the world in in this weird way. Like this, it gave us Israel. Yep. This misguided shit. And it shit. gave us that one star comment as a transitively. Yeah. But, no, yeah. if it wasn't. Dude, without Israel, we wouldn't have a one star comment. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I don't want to say I'm anti Israel now, <laughs> but. Oh, my I, God. I am anti Israel now. Uh, so Which, by the way, is, is a good position to have for the internet. So I'm, it I'm turns actually out. crushing it. We're on the right it side turns of history. Yeah, I'm on the right side yeah. of history. <laughs> Um, yeah, so a lot of weird stuff like, I mean, they were looking for fucking stargates, like interdimensional portals. I've seen that through movies and yeah. stuff like that. I yeah, don't know, uh, know how real that I was. I mean, like, so the, the how whole much of a documentary was Indiana Jones. Not that far off. There was <laughs> really? A, there was a lot of obsession with finding the Holy Grail. Yeah. Um, which was a big Nazi thing. They which I was literally find. supposed to be in Petra today. Were you? Yeah. Dude. That's where the Stargate was supposed to be. Yeah, no but, shit. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be. In I was Petra. supposed to be in Petra as as we Heinrich Himmler was looking for a Stargate in Petra. Oh no shit. Yeah. So in I, Jordan, I, one of the most wonderful countries on earth. You were talking to me about probably Petra should the rule the day. Middle East. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark isn't like that far off. They were well, looking. First off, Petra's in the Last Crusade, so get that right. Well, no, um, but they were also looking for the Lost Ark in fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark. They are. Yes. Yeah. They're looking for the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. They were looking for these historical like. Artifacts. Which is been a real salt in the wound to kill Jews with the Ark of the Covenant. Well, actually, we're going to talk about the Spear of Destiny for a minute. Do you know what this is? I do because I've seen Constantine. Yeah. So. And I uh, love it. I actually like that's my. The Spear of Destiny is a cooler religious artifact than the Ark of the Covenant. It's the coolest one. And the, 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 and the Nazis Grail. weren't really. And correct. They weren't really a christian no no, no. Nope. they thing. they there was were nothing christian ultimately about they were going to get rid of religion in general the same way the soviet union did the yes. problem is they came to power too quickly and they couldn't force 
people to not be religious, right. by the way. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Germans have traditionally been very religious uh, society. Well, I mean, they, invent, historically. they invented Prote- Protestantism. Yeah, Lutheranism or Luth- Protestantism, yeah. And, and, but even then, still, and Bavaria, deeply Catholic. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, they, they, it is certainly a religious country. And I mean, fuck, dude, half of Germany was the Holy Roman Empire, right? Right. So, Spear of Destiny time. Um, this is going to get a little in-depth at first, but it'll start making sense. So, uh, according to the account of Dr. Waiter, Walter Stein, uh, Hitler was, you know, while he's in Vienna, being shitty at art and stuff like that. He undertook a study of if the If someone occult. would have just bought one piece, the world could be completely different. Can you imagine if someone was just nice to him? school? Yeah. Was someone nice. One time, this is like... School shooters times a million. Yeah. Honestly, is what Hitler. Yeah. Hitler but, is the first like school shooter. It, like it, killing times, hit, killing Hitler or like making Hitler a good artist. Sorry. It feels like the type of. Uh, it feels like a monkey paw wish in a lot of ways, though. It, it, like not like obviously Hitler's awful, but it's like it's the type of thing where like it's in a time travel movie and you go back and kill Hitler and like oh it's great we did it it's better now and then you go back to the future somebody else becomes Hitler someone else becomes Hitler and they're better at it or like you know like the Soviet Union goes bananas. Uh, or, or just something it just it seems like the type of thing where it's like do you really trust history to work out if you just took one guy out no you're absolutely right yeah we wouldn't have israel so, <laughs> again it's kind of fucking weird how germany being poor hitler being a shitty artist and people being into woo woo occultism created the problems that we have now yeah. in the world it's fucking well, stupid you I, I i i've done it in sony you can translate like i i took uh the volstead act and 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 connected it to 9 11 like you can really connect pieces any way you want with history history is a, a beautiful inner working of just like butterfly effect webs yeah. it's just so dumb and yeah sometimes and you're it, like, really all, but it's all connected some fucking mystic lady some bitch helena blavatsky created genocide in germany like yeah. in a weird way, you know, it's I, that's why I find it fascinating. And I think to you, one thing I do want to kind of seg into like my overarching thing is I think a lot of people look toward this occult kind of background as a OK, it, it puts a nice bow on what happened in Nazi Germany for them. It's like, oh, well, they were dealing with black arts and demonic forces and things like that. Of course, it makes sense. I'm not saying that. That doesn't make sense to me. No, they're the suckers that bought into that bullshit. No, they, they found a way to really get people to eat it up because it yeah. made them feel special. People need to stop associating like the genocide with dark forces. Humans are very capable of terrible shit. Yeah. Like, don't don't think it's because they were summoning demons or going through Stargates or any dumb shit. No, there's a that. reason why we're still convict, convicting former SS people. Yeah. People got to be held responsible. Yeah, for no, that. it's like this cannot happen. Yeah. yeah but it, I consider that elder abuse, by the way. <laughs> uh, you would. Actually, no, we we thought of the perfect way to uh, try old Nazis. I don't know if you were with me with this, but we were like, if you find two, you just have them fight to the death. Oh, and the yeah, one that great. the one that wins See, I gets would to just, live out the rest of their like three years. I would just leave them outside yeah, in yeah. Phoenix on a hot summer day. Just let them wilt mm-hmm. in the desert. Mm-hmm. Just no AC. They, they get oh. no access to a car. Have you seen the Sean Penn movie about he's like this goth guy, like goth artist, kind of like Robert Smith, a Jewish uh his the whole movie is about him finding a Nazi in America and killing him. No, it's amazing. That sounds pretty fun. It's it's you got to smoke for it. Like it's a dumb yeah, movie, it's but it's pretty good. It's fair. So anyway, uh, real quick, Spear of Destiny was a spear that was used to injure Jesus on the cross. Yeah. So when Jesus oh. was being crucified, they would stab him. The, it's one of the stations of the cross. Yeah. Uh, one of the many things that happened to Jesus while he was be, being crucified was a Roman soldier was just like, hey, hey. hey fuck this guy and just chucked a spear at his side and hit it which by the way incredible throw was that the same spear that he used to to give him the vinegar sponge no so the vinegar sponge is another one of my favorites jack do you know about the vinegar sponge absolutely not the vinegar sponge is very interesting so if those have i mentioned this on the podcast before no we've We've just talked talked about about it i think we've just talked about it so there's a, a point in the bible and in the stations of the cross and everything where while Jesus is on the cross, um, a Roman soldier shows him mercy and takes a, a, a sponge uh, out of a jar of vinegar uh, and, and puts it up to his mouth to like 
just wet as generally mouth, it's a sponge of water but for jesus i just want to state for the record if i was alive back then i would have been that roman soldier uh, and if i was a white guy in the south in the 19th century america i would have never supported slavery well let me finish the story <laughs> yeah you should wait <laughs> oh okay he's he's burying yeah, the lead a little bit you here you may want to hear the yeah. end of it so that is generally considered the whole sponge situation but even the sponge in general the fact that there's a sponge involved I, but I, there is vinegar like he takes it out maybe he puts it in water and puts it up to his mouth or whatever but for whatever reason, that's looked at as a uh, as a, a thing of mercy, but um, oh, see, I was always told it was a sign of disrespect. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a, either. Well, you guys can't even get religion the cross. right. Then, yeah. Yeah. You're this probably right. Fucking wishy washy right. bullshit. Well, that's what Jews are correct. People were just like, Catholic. oh, it's vinegar, ha 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 ha, whatever. Even if it was mercy, you don't get the full translation of it. What it was? That's what Romans used to wipe their asses. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they would take a sponge in and vinegar. And wipe their assholes after they took a shit with it. And then they gave Jesus the, the shit sponge. I would have definitely not been that Roman soldier. Oh, okay. oh Where were you? Actually, I feel like weren't I would have been like Jesus. In... I feel like I would have been dying for people's sins if I would have been oh. around back then. Weren't you in Iraq during Abu Ghraib? Oh, yes. Uh, Where were you? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I was a cook. Uh, <laughs> I was in the kitchen just making sure everyone was fed. Not just the American soldiers, but Al-Qaeda too. I care about all human beings. That's Fair lovely. Enough. Yeah, that's a really good position to have. Yeah, cooking's great. Everyone can share. Food. Yeah, everyone shares can get together on food. Breaking someone, bread. Someone yeah. Photoshop Jack in the Abu, that famous Abu Ghraib photo, but put him in the naked pyramid, <laughs> but and smiling. <laughs> Someone did do that? No, I'm saying someone should. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was yeah, like, like, at this point, I've been photoshopped in so much. I, was I, was like, say, oh, okay. I thought you said someone actually had done that no, already. No, no, I was no, like, no, I kind of no. want to see this. You I've been will. photoshopped in some shit. You yeah. will see it by Tuesday, probably. Yeah, yeah okay. someone's going to make the first person that has Photoshop chops that hears that is yeah. going to do it, which I love about like making shit like this. Like, if you say 100%. something, they just make it. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't Dan Holloway, he's got his own fan page, mm -hmm. but it's nothing but photoshops, yes. right? Right. Yeah. We get kind of pulled into that universe as well every now and like then shopped yeah. In it, yeah. yeah shopped in but the shit. thing is with you it's like you know you got such a nice bod right there that he's uh, got a hot body he's got a we, hard body yeah we have you ever seen the ass on this good kid the way you are man jack have you seen the ass on this kid no i haven't i've only seen him shirtless his butt truck, crazy. Dude. Yeah. he don't need to he doesn't need to take his pants off or he's got a crazy no, butt to, to, can you show him your butt Offline. Do you have okay. one of those strong okay. aryan butts i do okay yeah, yeah he's got it's that nordic butt man yeah um but yeah, so Spear of Destiny, right? Uh, it's supposed to have phenomenal talismanic powers and, um, you know, used in the crucifixion. So the blood of Christ is on it, giving it that power. Yeah. Um, Hitler got really into this thing. Yes. Like really into the Spear of Power. Which uh, is really something more that Thanos should be into. Yeah, that's like Marvel Hitler? super villain yeah. shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, just real I quick. I mean, Hitler is the closest we've ever had to a, to a super villain. I mean, he yeah. he is the definition. Like, yeah. he's the closest thing we've had to Alex Luthor or like anything like that. Um, actually, Jeff Bezos might be too. But he yeah. does. Yeah, give rich guy super villain. Give yeah, him, we're we're about. Yeah, to, well, yeah we're only. Uh, hey, everyone thought Hitler was legit until the last end of it. Yeah, we're gonna find some things out about oh, Bezos. People, thing is, people are gonna be steamed when Elon Musk is Iron Man, though. They'll be like, I don't even want him. Get <laughs> God out of damn here. it! He's yeah, not as fun as Tony Stark. His so, face uh, is weird. According to legend, possession of the spear would bring the owner of the spear power to conquer the world, but losing it would bring immediate death. Um, suppose I'll tell you one thing: he's not taking over Afghanistan. No one is. No. no. There's even like a Rambo three part where like every you, you've seen Rambo three where they're in Afghanistan, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like the guy's like, yeah, people just like try to pass us around, but we've never been conquered. We just take a lot of shit. Yeah. yeah it's fine. Like we're, we're not going anywhere. Mm -mm. Um, here long before us, we'll be here long after us. Mm -hmm. So this spear like exists, I guess. And the relic had been owned by a succession of powerful European rulers down through the centuries and eventually came into possession of the Habsburg dynasty where it was put on display in Vienna. And they probably just lost it because of all the inbreeding. They just forgot where it Dude, was. They mm. probably were scared of nicking their skin on it yeah. and bleeding to death. You know? There's a little hemophilia going on yeah. with that, with that gotta, clan. The Habsburgs, I gotta say, yeah. their, oh, yeah. their performance in World War One does not make me think they had the spirit. Wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't, uh, it was not Carlos the second. It was, uh, uh, Carlos Mencia, yeah, yeah. Carlos the second, right? The the Habsburg, the one that was just hor horribly disfigured. disfigured. Um, I don't know of Spain, the yeah. one that had like the massive overbite. Yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name, but I, I don't know, know if it's I know Carlos. The yeah, you're talking about. I yeah, know the guy. Yeah. So uh, Hitler confided. He's a Habsburg. Yeah, they Who were bad. Who is it? 
Uh, Hitler confided in this doctor that the first time he had saw the spear on display, he had witnessed like extraordinary visions of his own destiny uh, unfolding before him and him reunifying like and creating a perfect Germany and all this stuff. Didn't get the ending. Yeah, yeah he did in his bunker, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He, had yeah, a nice... he, only, he only got the first part of that movie. Yeah, right. So uh, in 1923 on his deathbed, Hitler's mentor, who we were talking about earlier, Dietrich Eckert is yes, his name. Eckert. That's Eckert, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was actually a dedicated Satanist, too, yeah. uh, and central figure in the occult fool society, tying this all kind of together. Uh, founder of the Nazi party said... And a failed writer. Yeah. yeah. This is in 1923 when he said this. So before Hitler's even on the real up and up with like World War... like taking shit over i would say i, I don't know exactly. when's he in prison uh, like before I this i don't honestly man this is where uh, the soft court comes uh, in oh uh, no he he in the 20s he's in prison okay that so was after the uh, beer hall push yeah yeah, yeah yeah so uh which D- eckert was involved with for sure dietrich said follow hitler he will dance but it is i who have called the tune i've initiated him into the secret doctrine opened his centers and vision and given him the means to communicate with the powers do not mourn for me I shall have influenced history more than any Dude other was a German. Raging fucking alcoholic. All of them were on drugs half the time. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something we haven't even touched on yet. Is just they're always on. Meth. Yeah. Well, we touched right. on another they're episode on speed, actually. Meth, yeah. Some kind of cocaine eye drops. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Awesome. So on uh, the twelfth of March, nineteen thirty-eight, the day that Hitler annexed Austria, he arrived in Vienna, a hero. And his first thing he does was he goes to the Hof Museum where he takes possession of the spear. He's like, I got to get this fucking spear. Need the spear. Yeah. Uh, so he immediately sends it to Nuremberg because that's like the spiritual capital okay. of old Germany, like right. new Germany. Um, at 210 on April 30th. So like that's when the power starts going like right. 1938. That's when they start ascending really quick. Right. It's kind of interesting because like literally on 210, April 30, like 210. Wait, I'm sorry. At two o'clock, ten minutes, April thirtieth, nineteen forty-five, Americans get the spear. He dies like minutes later. He kills himself. He kills himself almost immediately after he loses the spear. Did he know that he lost the spear? I'm pretty sure. No shit. Yeah. Like so wait, he, th- this spear. We have this spear in our possession. Apparently, Americans. Yeah, that's what it says. Um, here, let's see. Uh, the spear fell into the hands of the American Seventh Army under General Patton later that day in fulfillment of the legend. Patton took it. Patton oh, took it. that's a dangerous guy to have that kind of power. <laughs> well, he died not long after. That is true. That spear's cursed. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, it stabbed Jesus, so. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, things that do that. Yeah. Anything Jesus touched really is a problem. <laughs> you would say that. I'm just saying, man. You want to wow. believe in a socialist hippie? That's yeah, your ideology. I am so anti-socialist. I will never support Jesus. Uh, you I'll can't that right now. You can't love Jesus and not love socialism. That's why I support the chosen people. Israel. They are capitalists. So. I'll give them that. <laughs> Fuck you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I look forward to the next review. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot of sound bites to take out of this. Completely out of context. Oh, boy. Uh, last thing real quick. Uh, one of Hitler's closest friends since childhood claims that Hitler who was 17 years old at the time, once spoke to him of returning Germany to its former glory. And uh, the guy was like, it was like another being spoke out of his body and moved him as much as it did me. And it's like, these were all just sad losers. Dude, yeah. 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 That's what I'm like. It's like the Columbine suck. kids amping them each other up. Yeah. It's like, you're right. We are mystical yeah. Aryan people. It's like really... what a bunch of fucking nerds Nazis were. I feel like not bad discrediting these people, but it feels a little shitty to be like, <laughs> You have giant dreams. Shut up, nerd. But like you shouldn't have those giant dreams. Well, whenever people always, you know, uh, whenever people always, uh, um, you know, you have a, it's a thing with veterans where a lot of dudes that were like, you know, sergeants or whatever, when they got out, they'll just chime in about things that are way out of their league on the Internet. But they think somehow their military service, you know, is right. But oh, I always make the point, like, you can't discount those guys because Hitler was a corporal at one point. So <laughs> yeah. that's great. Uh, uh, tied to this too uh, Hitler was given a book called Magic History Theory and Practice he had marked it up quite a bit in the mid 20s and they found it he had highlighted a section that said he who is not, does not have the demonic seed within himself will never give birth to a magical world all of Hitler's bullshit all of Himmler's bullshit all of the intricate like inner workings of the Nazi party within the SS 
are based on like D and D bullshit. Yeah. I'm glad we have uh, healthy outlets in this country, like cosplay conventions yeah. where people can just, uh, you know, get it out of your system in a very wholesome way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, you dress up like a character. Yeah. And you have fun. But you don't think you're the, the character, right? You just go to a park Not the good ones and just go LARP. Yeah. 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 Lightning yeah, bolt. Just LARP. Just LARP. Uh, yeah. LARPing can go wrong too. If there was no LARP. There would have been three more. Why? How would happen? QAnon. Oh, that's LARPing. Well, in a way, in a way, it was LARPing. Oh no, shit! It's it was some guy pretending he had inside information. Like, oh yeah, the guy from that. Well, and the nerdy- rest of them were LARPing is I don't even correspondence. I don't even know what you call. No, them. I would just say LARPing is like freedom fighters oh yeah no they're doing what's like you you know know, you know what i mean like guys who are like i'll be here i'll be here for america yeah it's like my freedom my freedom is infringed upon by other people's freedom to not believe in what i believe in yeah which is just so good it's like gold medal cognitive dissonance bullshit gotta hear both sides gotta hear gotta hear both sides yeah for sure um, but yeah, no, I, I just found it pretty interesting. I think like the culmination of, you know, what happened after World War One, the financial disparity of Germany, people wanting to rebrand their national identity and feel better about themselves, but also feel included in something a little bit greater than their own is how all of this started with the mystical societies in Germany. And that's kind of what led to some bad shit happening and just dump your energy into your favorite sports team it'll be a lot safer i'd rather men cry about alabama losing yeah. a football game than what happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not happening yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i would just say if it sounds too goddamn good to be true then it probably fucking is yeah did, did uh i know imperial culturally imperial japan they they saw their emperor as a deity yeah. mm-hmm. is is that where they channeled their energy into their kind of expansion and all that probably i would uh, imagine 100%. so yeah uh, they thought uh, the japanese thought they were also and I, they also thought they had a superiority thing well, they, they had a master yeah. race situation yeah. they had a world's sure. manifest destiny i mean look at what they did in the pacific they theater. did to yeah. the chinese yeah. and the yeah. koreans they 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 it was pure yeah. genocide Honestly, pure if genocide. we went through was every it? society we could probably find something similar to this yeah i i agree with the japanese troop what was the Japanese 731? Was it the one that was just like raping and murdering people and like playing kickball with women in China? Kids? Yeah, like yeah. the Japanese troop that, that went might up. have been the most famous one. But yeah, they were, they were doing like live vivisection stuff like that. Did the Italians have to do that? I don't. I think if just, anyone had a claim to actual superiority, you know, they were Romans at one point. They had a good resume there. The Italians I mean, certainly committed war crimes, but were mostly pretty benign. I think. But compared, uh, compa- it, compared to what? Was right? yeah. that's, a, that's a really rise, low bar, man. Did he yeah. Pull the whole? Well, they 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 crawled over it. <laughs> they just made it. Yeah. yeah. Like, but no. I mean, hey, man, they just made trains run on time, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and that is the dumbest shit that ever gets thrown around. He was about. the first one. Mussolini, well, he wasn't before the emperor, but Mussolini was way before Hitler. Mussolini took power. In like yeah, he had already been in power for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And there's such an afterthought to you a lot of the time, I feel like, in World War, like comparing, you know. They should be an afterthought. I know. Yeah, I was, they are, the, what's sad is the Japanese not being an afterthought because they were every bit as awful as the Germans were. Oh, if, oh. If not worse oh my yeah. god this i mean you, you you can't compare the two uh and, and it's, it's 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 tough it's tough to compare the holocaust to the japanese atrocities uh, in east asia but i mean uh, americans are so eurocentric that right. we are learning we learn about the holocaust rightfully so yeah but enough isn't put into learning about what the japanese well, did I, I think a lot of it gets redirected to the fact that we dropped uh, atomic bombs too it, that's what most Maybe people a little more closure there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right I, well it's, it's always funny when people get mad about that because i'm just like a there were no good options in that situation hmm. and b like if there was ever uh evil people to drop atomic bombs on. I'm not going to necessarily... I don't think the Japanese were evil, yeah. but they bought into the same bullshit that the Germans bought they into. Were, that's fair. But, like, they were... And it, it is, like, the Germans, too, as far as I'm concerned. Like, yeah, there were there were people who just honestly got swept up in it, but at some point, like, I, everyone's I, liable for what they uh, the, the Japanese were allowed to... The emperor was allowed to keep existing afterwards. Yeah, no, he had yes. to say he wasn't divine. Basically, yeah. they were like he's like listen, I'm not god. They were more Sorry. Cons- they were more yeah. concerned with getting that country under control. Than- yeah. Well, I mean, god, MacArthur was what the ruler I mean, putting, of Japan for a while. They were putting Nazis back in charge of cities and and, and sections I mean, after shit, World War II. Project and, Paperclip. Dude. And, and it all yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, we can get it all that started later, yeah. and this fucking a lot of, a big contributing factor it was at the end uh, w- instead of empowering Germany after World War One, the world shit on Germany, and Germany uh, developed their 
uh, bullshit because of how they were being shit on. Post-World War II, we did the smart thing. We empowered Germany. We empowered Japan. And uh, now, obviously, those two countries are economic freaking uh, powerhouse. powerhouse. I mean, we, I would say- we built Japan's railroads. And now they're the best in the world. I would say honestly to you, like if it were Our not for the system sucks. if it were not for the Marshall Plan, America wouldn't be the superpower that it is. Yeah, the, fair. Yeah, like you know, I mean, re- making the Germany rely on our production in order to rebuild itself it was well, probably all of Europe had to rely on our production. It was bombed to fuck. Yeah, I mean, fair, but at the same time, it's in, it's strictly said like you're buying from us, motherfuckers. Like, yeah, 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 for yeah. Sure. And that's what made us so fucking wealthy. Like on a it sped up the process. I mean, basically. we were already we were doing hyper great. wealthy it, to the point where it, before World War I, before we entered World War One, the general European consensus this is World War One. The yeah. general European consens- consensus was like, "Oh, America's rich. All they care about is making money." So there, if they enter the war, it'll, not wrong. It'll only be to make. We'd never money. really been tested on a national stage. We've obviously were in the Philippines. We were doing in in, in Cuba and whatnot. But uh, but we had never uh, not to that point. We had never done warfare outside of our own soil that yeah. the the rest of the world was doing with each other. Yeah, we yeah we weren't jumping into a mob fight right th- that often. Yeah, yeah if ever. Um, but but the, the the consensus still was like that America was hyper wealthy. Well, I, what I'm saying though is like it. It was a multiplier of that, though. Yeah. Like, Marshall Plan just poured gasoline on our brilliant economic fire. Oh, yeah. We were, yeah, 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 I mean, 100%. it was uh, amazing. Um, but, yeah, no, so that's kind of the topic I wanted to talk about. I, I don't think that anyone should ever think that Hitler was capable of doing the – or the Nazi party was capable of doing the atrocities that they did because of any dark or evil forces. That's Humans are pretty dark and evil on their own. And it's, They didn't it, decide to do it because the devil told them. Right. It was, I feel bad about myself and my country, and I want to feel special. Right. People wanting to feel special is probably one of the worst things in the world. Yeah, it's not. It's not uh, unlike like validation from other people and not self validation might be terrible. It's a pretty bad motivator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's my topic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I want to keep talking about this shit for like three more hours because yeah. I find it fascinating. But you know, we don't have time for that. What'd you all learn? Uh, I don't fucking know that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah, you shouldn't just get into weird random shit and run with it. Yeah. I learned that from now on, I'm going to be wiping my ass with vinegar sponges. Yes. Very good, Jack. Yeah. Very good, Jack. Like that, Dan? Yeah. Jack, thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure Talk to Maquette. <laughs> That's thank you very much in Swedish language. No. Again, I didn't learn that because I feel like it's a superior language. I learned it for the pussy. From a runestone? <laughs> yeah. So I could, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, check us out on softcorehistory.com. Uh, check out our merch. Buy some merch. Uh, leave a five-star review. Maybe not uh, a one-star review where you feel one. bad for me for no fucking reason. Uh, yeah. Rate. Subscribe. Yeah, it's not like you had to join the IDF. Tell a friend about the podcast. <laughs> and uh, until next week. You just got soft served? Did I just do this? That's your thing. Well, yeah. Say it. You just got soft served. All right.